In this video, we'll continue discussing dislocations in FCC metals. At the end of the previous video, we left you a question. There's a discrepancy here. If we look at the strain energy, the strain energy of two Shockley partials is a square over three, but the strain energy for the perfect dislocation is square over two. So the two Shockley partials seems to be energetically favorable compared to one perfect dislocation. However, if we look at the gamma surface, the perfect dislocation lies on the energy minimum. The partial dislocation sits on the settle point. It's a local energy minimum, not a global energy minimum. The difference between the energy of having the partial and having the full dislocation is called stacking fault energy. To be more specific, this is called intrinsic stacking fault energy. Now, let's explain why we have such discrepancy in the model on the top, we're looking at the stacking of 110 planes. 110 planes have A, B, A, B stacking. In the model, B1 is the perfect dislocation. Then B2 and B3 are the partial dislocations. The energy of B1, the perfect dislocation, is greater than the sum of the two partial dislocations, B2 and B3. Over B2 and B3, they repel each other. However, between B2 and B3, there is a stacking fault, and this stacking fault creates additional surface energy. This stacking fault energy tries to bring the two partials together. Therefore, we have a balance of the repulsion force between the two partials and the attraction force due to the stacking fault energy. Thus, the dislocation core structure is stable when these two forces cancel each other. Taking a step further, by looking at the dissociation distance of the partials, we can calculate the stacking fault energy. The relationship of the partial dissociation distance and the stacking fault energy is given here, where G is the shear modulus, B is the Burgers vector of the partial, gamma is the stacking fault energy, and D is the dissociation distance at equilibrium. From this equation, you can tell if a material has a high stacking fault energy where gamma is high, D will be small, so the dissociation distance will be small. For example, aluminum has high stacking fault energy, thus the dislocation core structure is more compact. In contrast, copper alloys usually have a low stacking fault energy, therefore the dissociation distance is larger and the stacking faults can be easily imaged. The figures on the left were taken from the textbook. The dark, bright, dark, bright fringes you see here that forms one stacking fault. And these lines, wiggling lines, these are partial dislocations. Discussed the TEM imaging of stacking faults and dislocations in my TEM videos. If you are interested in this topic, you can check those videos out. One thing always to remember is in TEM, what we see are the 2D projections of the 3D objects. One interesting thing to discuss here is how partial dislocations move on the slip planes. If you have a metal having low stacking fault energy, the dislocations will dissociate and form two partials. In most of the cases, you will see prominent planar slip. That means most of the slip are confined on a single slip plane. As shown in the example on the left, cross slip, that is to slip from one 111 planes to another 111 planes, is possible but very difficult. First of all, individual partial dislocations cannot cross-slip. In order to cross-slip, the two partials have to combine into one perfect dislocation. This is called constriction. The constricted perfect dislocation can cross-slip, then dissociate again on a different slip plane. We will discuss slip, cross-slip, and a double cross slip of dislocations in one of the future videos. Before wrapping up today's video, we'll look at one very useful tool to study dislocations in FCC metals. The tool or the model is called the Thompson tetrahedron. To construct the Thompson tetrahedron, you find the 111 plane. This is one example. And also, this plane shaded in blue is another 111 plane. So use the blue planes and construct that into a tetrahedron. This is called the Thompson tetrahedron. Then what is the use of the Thompson's tetrahedron? If you look at the four phases, 
These are the slip planes in FCC metals. These are the 111 planes. If you look at all the edges, these are the perfect dislocation Burgess vectors. If you look at the three red lines I drew on one of the faces, these are the Burgess vectors of the partial dislocations. Because of this specific geometry, we can get one special type of defects in FCC metals, especially the metals after irradiation. These are called stacking fault tetrahedra. These TEM micrographs were taken from a classical paper by Yoshinaka and Shimomura and the co-authors. These radiation-induced defects have the tetrahedral morphology. Each face is a stacking fault and each edge is a partial dislocation. The formation of stacking fault tetrahedra and their interactions with other dislocations is beyond the scope of this video. If you are interested in this topic, you can find more information in the Introduction to Dislocation book. In the next video, we'll come back to the partial dislocations and discuss the partial and the partial dislocation interactions.